Assalamu alaikum, welcome to my channel. Before we start, kindly subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. Today we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 4 Extended Variant 4 2, May June 2020. Let's start. Divide $24 in the ratio 7 is to 5. So, total how many parts do we have? We have 12 parts. 7 plus 5 is 12. So, 7 over 12 of 24 will give us 14. And to find 5 over 12, that's the same way we'll do 5 over 12 multiplied by 24. That will give us 10. Next one, write $24.60 as a fraction of 2,870. Give your answers in its lowest form. Very easy. Just put this whole thing in the calculator. And you will get 3 over 350. These are easy questions. Write 1.92 as a percentage of 1.60. When we want to write as a percentage of or when we want to find the percentage, remember we multiply by 100. So first we write 1.92 over 1.60 and then multiply by 100. This will give us 120. So that's the answer, 120 percentage. B, in a sale, the original prices are reduced by 15 percentage. Calculate the sale price of a book that has an original price of $12. For this, we are going to use this formula, the original uh, value or price multiplied by the change in the percentage is going to give us the new value. So the original price is $12 and reduced by 15 percentage. If it is reduced or decreased, then we minus it from 100 and divide the answer by 100. This will give you 0 0.85. This is an easier way to do. If it is an increase, then you put a plus here instead of a minus. And then you just multiply your original value with this 0 0.85. This will give you 10.2. So that was the sale price of the book, $10.2. You can add a zero. Next, calculate the original price of a jacket. That has a sale price of 38.25. We can still use the same rule. We want to find the original price. And it has been reduced by 15%. So we are going to use this 0 0.85. This gives us the new value or the new price, which is $38.25. You see how easy it is with one equation. You can solve both types of questions. Please always write down all your formulas or equations or anything that you find which is new in a notebook or a notepad so you can refer to it whenever you need it. This will give us 45. So that was the original price of the jacket. C1, Dean invests $500 for 10 years at a rate of 1.7 percentage per year, simple interest. Calculate the total interest on during the 10 years. We are going to use this formula. I is equal to PRT over 100. P is the principal, that is your starting amount. So we have P, which is 500. R is the rate of interest, that is 1.7 percentage. And T is the number of years, which is 10. So we just have to write I is equal to P times R times T divided by 100. And you will get the answer, $85. Very easy to mark. Now next one, Ollie invests $200 at a rate of 
0.35% per day compound interest. Calcul calculate the value of all these investment at the end of one year. We are going to use the compound interest formula. A is equal to P bracket 1 plus R over 100 N. The only difference is going to be that this is N is for years. But in our question, we are compounding it for each day. So total number of days are 365. So in place of N, we will substitute 365. So A, the total amount is equal to P. P is the... Uh, principal which is uh, 200 1 plus r r is 0 0.0035 over 100 and n is 365 days this will give us 202.57 you can round it or you can leave it like that it is acceptable so you can either write it as 202.6 or you could have written, rounded it to a whole number. All the three an answers are fine. Now in part three, Edna invests $500 at a rate of R percentage per year compound interest. At the end of six years, the value of Edna's investment is 559.78. Find the value of R. This is still compound interest. We are still going to use this formula. Just let's write down what we have. We have that principal is 500. R, we don't have. That is R, only we will write. The number of years is 6. And the total amount at the end of the year, which is A, is 559.78. So we will replace everything and we have to make R the subject. If you're good in your basic algebra, this is a very easy question. Let's start replacing. So we have 559.78 is equal to 500 bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the power of 6. We will shift the 500 to the other side. It will become divide. Now you are left with 1 plus r over 100 to the power of 6. Now suppose if you had x a over b is equal to y and you want to make x the subject, you are going to shift the power to y, but you will flip it. So it's a over b, now you are going to write b over a. We know that if there is no number, there is a 1 in the denominator. So this is 6 over 1. And when we shift this here, it's going to be 1 over 6. You can put in the calculator now or leave it and continue solving. It's up to you. Normally, I leave it like that only, but in this question, I'm showing you that if you write it as a Put it in the calculator, this is the value you're going to get. Now shift the 1 to the other side. It's a plus, it's going to be a minus. So you will be left with 0 0.019. And 100 is a divide. When you shift that to the other side, you're going to multiply 100 with 0 0.019. And that is your R. 1.9. Practice a couple of questions like this. This is qu repeated quite often. Question number two is a vector question. We have to find 2p plus q. So write it, write the p, 4 and 5. The 2 is outside. Plus q, which is negative 2, 7. First, Multiply this 2 with the 4 and the 5. So you will get 8 and 10. Now it's straightforward. Like Just put this in the calculator. 8 plus minus 2 and you will get 6. And then 10 plus 7, you will get 17. 
So this is your answer. Next one, we have to find the magnitude of P. We use this formula to find the magnitude. This line means magnitude. And the top one always represents the X, the down one, Y in the column vector. So this is equal to square root. We have, we are using this, so four square plus five square. This will give you 6.04, sorry, 6.40. Most of the questions are very easy if you remember the formula. So keep writing them down. In part B, A is the point 41 and the vector AB is equal to negative 3, 1 written in column form. Find the coordinates of P. Before we move forward, you should know that the vector AP is equal to B minus A. So we have AB, which is negative 3, 1, and we don't have B, and we have got A. We have to write this in the vector form, so it will be 4 and 1. Now to find B, we are going to shift this to the other side. It's negative, it will become positive. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is B in vector form, and you know that the top number represents the X, so that is 1, and the down number Y. That is our B. Part C, the line y is equal to 3x minus 2 crosses the y-axis at g. Write down the coordinates of g. When the line crosses at the y-axis, it means your x is 0. So in place of x, substitute 0, and you will get your y value. So the coordinate is 0 and negative 2. We have been given a diagram and O is the origin. OT is equal to 2TD. It means if TD is 1, OT is going to be 2. M is the midpoint of CT. OC is C. So this vector is C. And OD, the whole OD is D. So what is OT going to be? OT is going to be 2 over 3 parts because OD is divided into 3 parts of D. This is our OT. And TD will be 1 third D. We have to find the position vector of M. Position vector means you start with O. So OM is the vector that we need to find. How can we go there? We can go there from OC, OC to CM. When you're writing it in this form, please see that the middle one is going to be the same always. OC is C, but we do not have CM. We have to find CM. And how can we find CM? CM is the midpoint of CT. So first we'll have to find CT. To find CT, we can go from CO plus OT. CO is negative C because the vector is going from OC and now we are going from CO so it will become negative. OT we already found it is 2 third D. This is CT. CM is half of CT, so half bracket, negative C plus 2 third D. Half multiplied by negative C will give us negative half C, and half multiplied by 2 third D will give us 1 third D. So this is what we are going to replace here. 
we don't need to put the plus we can just write negative half c plus one third d you know if there is no number there is a one right so one minus half will give you half c and the one third d is there so this is your position vector for m moving on to question number three the speed v kilometer per hour of each 200 cars passing a building is measured the table shows the results calculate the estimate of the mean this is group data and when you want to find the estimate of estimated mean of a group data we use this formula mean is equal to the sum of f of x over n x is your midpoint f is your frequency and n is total frequency so this we can do it by making a table it's much uh, neater and better so this is your data the midpoint and frequency data is that is given to you here so we have 0 and 20 and the midpoint to find the midpoint add your data the the limits that are there and divide by 2 that is 10 that is your midpoint frequency is given to you 16 I'm going to do that for all add both the numbers 20 plus 40 you will get 60 divided by 2 30 so that is the midpoint for the second set of data So I finished doing that. Now add the frequency and see how many is there. It's already given 200, so no need to do that. And now you have to multiply the midpoint by the frequency and write the value here and write the total of that. 10 multiplied by 16, 160. So that's the total. Now we are going to use the formula that we have. The sum of the midpoint multiplied by the frequency is 8280 and divide by n which is the total frequency that is 200 let's see what we get now 41.4 so that is our mean now in b1 we have to use the frequency table this table to complete the cumulative frequency table that is very easy we just add so 16 plus 34 will give you 50 now 50 plus 62 will give you 112 and then 112 plus 58 will give you 170 that's how you complete the frequency a cumulative frequency table and we have to draw a cumulative frequency diagram now so we will plot the point and uh, solve you start from here this is your speed is your x-axis this is your x-axis and this is your y so when it is 20 the speed is 16 how many squares do we have here we have five squares so if you want to know what is each square value divide 20 by 5 4 so for 16 we'll need to take four lines four times four is 16 so 16 is going to be here 20 and 16 and then we need 40 and 50 this is 40 here and 50 will be in between and then 45 and 112 when the speed is 45 so take between here and we need to round it to 112 that will be somewhere here and then when it is 50 it is 170 again it will be in the middle somewhere here 60 is 196 that's here and 80 is 200 so now just join the points together make a smooth curve and your diagram is done.
the next part use your diagram to find an estimate of the upper quartile to find the upper quartile if a cumulative frequency diagram is given we first find the position of the upper quartile on the y axis so to do that we take 3 fourth of the frequency that will give us 150 150 is somewhere here and then draw a line from there to your curve and then check what is the corresponding value on the x-axis here each line is two points so this is 40 42 and you will see this is 48 so your upper quartile is 48 kilometers per hour next the number of cars with a speed greater than 35 km per hour so 35 km is somewhere here draw a line touch the graph and see what is the corresponding cumulative frequency value we will get 40 here but these are the number of cars that is less than 35 we want more than so whenever you want that from your top value minus this value 200 minus 40 you will get 160 so 160 cars we have next two of the 200 cars are chosen at random find the probability that they both have a speed greater than 50 kilometers per hour the first thing we will need to find is that how many cars are having a speed greater than 50 kilometers per hour speed greater than 50 kilometers per hour is for these two blocks 26 plus 4 30 cars so out of the 200 cars 30 have a speed greater than 50 km per hour but we need to find two of the 200 cars chosen at random so the other car will be 29 because there were 30 we already chose one so now there are 29 and the total number of cars also has reduced because one car has already been removed it's like you have five chocolates and if you eat one you are going to have four now not five and multiply by 199 this will give us 87 over 3980 you can leave it as a fraction in part d a new frequency table is made by combining intervals and we have to draw a histogram to show the information in this table this y-axis is the frequency density and this is the speed by kilometer per hour to find frequency density we use the formula frequency over class width so let's find the frequency density of each bar the first one is frequency is 50 and the class width is the upper limit minus the lower limit so 40 minus 0 which is 40 we will get 1.25 for the second bar the frequency is 120 and 50 minus 40 that is our class width and we will get 12 for the third bar we have 30 as the frequency and 80 minus 50 that will give us 1 on the y-axis 10 squares make 5 it means that 2 square is 1 so this is 1 this will be 2 and 1.25 will be a little bigger than that and this is 40 so we'll draw the bar here now this is the first bar just a little above 1 and then 12 so that is easy 11 and 12 draw a straight line this is still 50 and then for the third and the last bar it is 1 so this is 1 draw the line here from 50 till 80 
So we are done with the histogram. Bring us to the end of this video. For question number four onwards, please watch part two. And if I've helped you, kindly like the video, share it with your friends, and do remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching.